to The Awakening. And today I've got a little visitor joining us on The Awakening, and that's happy. Happy with a smile on their face. And today I want to talk about animals. I want to talk about our pets and how they just lie there and enjoy themselves and yow and purr and, and how we need to be a little bit more like them enjoying ourselves. So how about it? How about we forget about all that stuff out there? I just put on a happy news message today just um, to get you into the mood of some happy news. <laughs> so welcome to The Awakening. So today, <laughs> I'm waiting to do an interview with um, Kai Ashley, who is a healer. A uh, healer of healers, she calls herself, so she helps the healers heal. I'm very interested in finding out more about that. And so what is it about animals, do you think? What is it about animals that they are so, it's so easy for them to, um, to be able to let go and relax and they don't get caught up in all the madness like we do. What is it about our beautiful animals? Hmm. Well, today I woke up to the snoring of Peace the Cat under the bed. Snoring gently, not worrying about anything, not even thinking about anything. And then Ellie came and sat with me on the bed and just wanted, just wanted to play. Just wanted to play. And I thought, you know what? How about having a cat's day today? How having, having a day where you switch off from life, the sun's coming out, which is beautiful. I'm going to go in the sun soon. You switch off from life, guys. You switch off from everything. You just watch your animals. Just watch your animals. Watch your little dog scampering around in the grass, uh, doing what they do, playing, barking. Watch your cat lying on the windowsill. I mean, Peace is lying there with one paw hanging down. He's just not bothered. Why are we so different to our animals? Why can't we be more like our animals, more like our cats and dogs? We don't seem to get caught up in life like we do. They seem to be able to let go and enjoy themselves. They're totally in the moment. If you want to see something totally in the moment, look at your animals. When I go to Yuendon Valley, they have absolutely no judgment. They run towards you and they want to come and lick your face and play with you. They don't care who you are, what you are. They just love you. It's just like this pure, unconditional love, like a baby. When a baby is born, they have nothing but just this pureness, this unconditional love that they want to give out. And bit by bit, they're told, oh, you can't do this. You can't do that. Listen to mommy. Listen to daddy. Take on my fear. Take on their fear. Take on, take on the world. And that's what you're doing by watching the fake news, the lamestream media, by watching social media and everyone's fear at the same time. One minute they're saying one thing, one minute they're saying another and, and there's no point. There's no point to doing this anymore, quality. What are you so scared of? Are you scared of dying? Is that it? Are you scared you're going to die? Because you're not going to die if you start taking care of yourself and you start healing your body and you start thinking about the body and taking care of it and what's inside of you, you're not going to die. If you start doing, standing up for yourself, and taking away the things that could endanger your life, like the ones, the programs that you're seeing on here, you're not going to die, okay? You're not going to die. There's no reason why you should. There's a huge light that's working for you, that is saving you, that is changing the planet. You've got a wonderful president in America doing a lot of work. You've got the Q team, there's 8,000. Uh, officers that are there 
sorting everything out for you. You're not going to die. Okay, not unless you, what, you believe in it and not unless you start to join and you start to put your energies in and your talents in and open people's hearts and build this consciousness and understand that when you're in a certain consciousness of light, you know that radiation is not going to be good for you, my darlings. You know that certain foods, okay, I went around to see a friend yesterday and he was about to eat a tangerine. I said to him, don't eat it. Don't eat it. I just, my gut, my gut is telling me you're not, not to eat that. And he thought about it and he said, you know, you're right. It's too acidy and it's going to make me ill. Now, the more you get to know yourselves and to know your bodies and to know what's really going on inside you, you're going to heal yourself. You're going to be able to heal yourselves. You need to heal yourselves. And you're not going to die. So there's nothing, nothing, nothing to be scared of. I'm not scared of anything going on out there. I know we're winning. But if you don't want to listen and you want to keep putting on scary messages, silly messages that are not enhancing your life or anybody else, if you want to self sabotage, it's called self-sabotage. And today I'm going to be introducing Kay Ashley about her work with self-sabotage. Is there anything we can do to help you? It's very easy to self-sabotage. We all do it. I did it for years and years and years. Um, sometimes I still do. Um, like not wanting to get up, not wanting to do anything to just sit there and watch the news and, and, and all the rubbish. You're going round and round in circles, trapping yourself. People used to do that in the therapeutic community. They used to self-sabotage. Um, I remember someone said to them one day, what would happen if you didn't have that issue to worry about? What would you do? What would you do if you didn't have that particular issue to worry about. It, that makes you go round and round. Every time you do your therapy, you're, say, you're talking about the same thing. Him, him or her or that or them or the world or that or this. Or You never talk about your responsibility. You never think about, hang on a second. What am I doing? How can I change? That's called self-awareness. That's called learning from your mistakes. But you don't seem to do that. You self-sabotage. You sabotage. You keep running around in circles doing the same things over and over again. And sitting there watching the news or putting that rubbish, because it's total rubbish what you're putting out on social media about an incubation of a year of a virus. You're mad if you do that, because there's no such thing. <laughs> How can a virus incubate for a year? For God's sake, the, the virus disappears with the sun. <laughs> you need to wake up, guys, and you need to wake up big time. But anyway, coming from the dark into the light, what I'm saying is do your research, be intelligent. You know, if you watch a good doctor, a doctor that really wants to tell you the truth, watch um, Rashid Buttar. I can't get him on moving on TV at the moment but maybe at some point I will. Watch Rashid Buttar, and he will tell you that you cannot incubate a virus for a year. They want you locked down, and they want you locked down for two years so that they can do whatever they want. You've got to understand that. But you, with your wisdom, and you have got wisdom, somewhere in there, <laughs> you've got it. You cannot incubate a virus for a year. I mean, a child knows that. Jesus. A flu bug. 100,000 people coming into the UK every month. And do you think they'd be bringing them in without testing them if this was serious? Everybody's going on the streets now, rioting in America. They're all rioting. They've all forgotten about social distancing. Can you not see that? It's like going into a film and out into another film. 
You're watching a horror film called Riots now. Before that, you watched a film called COVID. Before that, you watched a film called Bushfires. Before that, you watched a film called Greta. Before that, you watched a film called Impeach Trump, Impeach Trump. Before that, you watched a film called Terrorist Attacks. You've got to wake up, guys. Before that, you watch films about wars and more wars and more wars. I, am, I don't even know if the childhood that I had was true. I, I don't even know that, that there were real terrorist attacks in the country I grew up in. I don't know anything because the media would do everything to keep you in fear because that is the disease. The disease is fear. Nothing else, fear. Fear, fear, fear. That's what they love and that's what they do to you. Take care. Love you lots. Before we go, let's pull a card out. Stay sane in a crazy world. Let's have a look at the card. I'm all for imperfection. And today, I'm a bit imperfect. I'm a lot imperfect. There we go. <laughs> the ego takes over and says, this is not good, that is not good. Look at her, what a mess. I'm imperfect, good, so what? So are you. Get used to it, you're never gonna be perfect. There's no such thing. You can only be excellent. Do your best. And let's see what the cards say today. How does they say you're a crazy one? Just thought I'd have a bit of a laugh there. <laughs> Imperfect fringe, Lauren's trying to fix it. Make it look perfect, boom, boom, boom. It's not going to, is it? It'll do what it wants. How does it stay in the crazy world? Drink more water, and that is exactly what I need to do. I've had loads of healing. Today, I will make sure I am drinking enough water, taking care of my body, so I don't feel too low. Drink more water. Also, you've got the book, Simply Amazing, Chapter 8. I'm in it. Um, my story about the therapeutic community. And uh, please, you can get it from me, or you can get it from the Positivity Centre in Nashton Lane. Uh, when they open again, at some point, um, they've got lots of fun things. Paul's got lots of fun things coming up. Um, I hope you enjoy everything. Enjoy your lives. Do what you love. Um, being perfect like me, look, imperfect, cool cat, imperfect gray hairs popping into the blonde here, imperfect. <laughs> Nothing's perfect, only they say God is perfect, love is perfect, love that is unconditional is perfect. Nothing else. Love you lots. Have fun. Simply amazing. You are right to happy. Bye. Welcome to the awakening. Love you. Bye. Thank you.